Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Oliver Trankelder United Church of Christ. We are an open and affirming community of faith, but no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Uh, you might notice the acoustics are a little bit better this morning. Our carpets have been removed because this coming Saturday, for the first time in 20 years, our floors are going to be properly stripped and treated and waxed. Uh, and we are very grateful uh, to Rich and the work that he's done getting this planned. Next Sunday, we should be worshiping normally in here with the caveat. <laughs> The air conditioning is going to be going, so I've been told to help everything dry. So if it is really, really cold here, or if there is a very strong chemical smell, we'll simply worship in the fellowship hall. But for now, it should be fine, and we are grateful uh, that we are getting these done. Do you have anything to add, Rich? No. Um... We're going to empty the rest of it out today and uh, uh, serve the kids and my end goal is to come in tomorrow and finish it off. All right, thank you. Today is the final Sunday to make any donations for Chester County Migrant Ministries. Um, so if you brought anything to donate for the health kits, please make sure you put those on the mission table, which is now on the other side of the hallway. This evening is our monthly Tuesday service. It is at 7 p.m. This is a service of simply just singing, prayers, uh, and silence. Communion is available. All are welcome to attend. This Tuesday is a church council meeting. If you are one of our church council members, we will be meeting this Wednesday. Uh, sorry, this Tuesday, May 14th at 7 p.m. Wednesday at 7 p.m. is our weekly virtual prayer meeting. So please feel free to join us either on telephone or online. The information for uh, the prayer meeting is in your worship guide. Next Sunday is Pentecost. And traditionally on Pentecost, we do collect our strength in the church offering. Uh, we do not have a particular envelopes for this offering, although it's an important one. So we ask that you prayerfully consider what you can give and any donations you can either put in any envelope, write strength in the church and put your name or envelope number, or just write strength in the church in the memo of your check. Finally, it's that time of year. We have a slew of denominational activities. Next Sunday at 2 p.m. is the Schwenkfelder General Meeting. That's going to be at the Library and Heritage Center as well as online. Anybody can go to that. I invite you. Beforehand, before the business, there's even going to be a guest speaker on the tradition of making homemade pretzels and pretzels in the culinary life of Pennsylvania Germans. So come to that. We also have coming up the United Church of Christ Spring Meeting. The Southward Pilgrimage, which is an opportunity to have a hymn sing at one of the historic meeting houses, as well as the Penn Dry Goods Market. If you're a fan of Pennsylvania German handiwork or um, antiques. That is an event being held at the Schweinfelder Library and Heritage Center. Just a lot going on. Make sure to mark your calendars. All right. Are there any other announcements to share this morning? Is that council meeting? Is that online? That is an excellent question. Because he's not done with it until after Memorial So. As far as I'm aware, the church council meeting is in person this Tuesday, May 14th at 7 p.m., but there may be an option for online and I can double check. Are there any other announcements? That's an excellent question. 
He's the one who called the meeting, so I'm assuming that he'll be there. Yes. We still need some reading volunteers, and Tony, they can sign up in the hallway on the sheet, yes? Yes, yes. all right. Okay. Seeing no others, let's be in the spirit of worship together. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome. God reigns over the whole earth. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. For God reigns over the whole earth. Sing praises with a song. For God reigns over all. And at this time, let's rise in spirit or body as we feel able and together sing our first hymn. Ordinary encounters and events. 
that we might trust in your power to heal us. Make us channels of your ever-present grace. Through Jesus Christ, amen. Friends, the good news of our Lord and Savior is that there is nothing, not heights, depths, rulers, things present, nor things to come that can keep us from the love of God. In the name of Christ Jesus, our sins are forgiven.
this time, I would like to welcome forward with gratitude our scripture reader this morning. said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the land of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations. Beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. You see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. All his blessing them, he withdrew from them, and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today is Ascension Sunday. Now technically, uh, Thursday was Ascension Day, but today is the Sunday when we celebrate Christ's Ascension. And Ascension is the last of the five holy milestones in the life of Jesus. If you recall, we begin each new year, that is Advent, as a people in darkness. And then what happens? Jesus is born. That's one. 
Then Christ is baptized. Christ is transfigured up on a mountaintop. Christ dies but is resurrected. And finally, after 40 days, Christ ascends to heaven. Now, I actually did this lesson with our little angels, Christian preschoolers, last month during our children's chapel. I taught them the word ascend, which means just to go up. I always ask the preschoolers to list things that ascend, to which their top three responses are always airplanes, Birds and UFOs. <laughs> anyway, then I have a, a helium balloon with a long length of fishing line on it. And we watch the balloon ascend up into the skylight here, just like Jesus ascended to heaven. And that's what a section is all about. Jesus died but was resurrected in body. And so he walked this earth, talking, eating amongst his friends, and teaching for an entire 40 days. But after that, his time on earth was finished. So how does an already dead man walking get to heaven? No. God takes him up directly. We heard read that Jesus led his disciples to a hill. He stood before them and blessed them. He admonished disciples to look up as Jesus disappeared into the clouds, leaving them with a sense of wonder, mystery, and probably also fear. Then I'm guessing it got really quiet. After all, Jesus was gone. I wonder, did the disciples shed tears? Did they tremble? What did the ascension mean to them? And what does it mean for us Christians today? <clears throat> well, first of all, I think it exemplifies just how special, holy, and exalted Jesus was. I mean, there was every ever one other person in the Bible, that is Elijah, who God took up directly to heaven. All right, footnote here. Possibly two others, depending on their interpretation of Genesis, Enoch also may have been taken up. And in fact, the Apostle Paul certainly believed Enoch was taken up. As he states in Hebrews 11.5, By faith Enoch was taken so that he did not experience death. But either way, the point still stands. The ascension is a powerful reminder that Jesus is more than just a man or a teacher, but rather the Son of God who holds all authority in heaven and on earth. Christ is Lord, and he goes to reign over all things. <clears throat> Reverend David Roseberry writes, This truth should give confidence to every believer left here on earth. As we navigate life's challenges, we can trust that our ascended Lord has not abandoned. Instead, he continues interceding on our behalf and guiding and sustaining us by his spirit. By recognizing Christ's exalted position, we can face our own trials with courage and hope. I mean, there can be no doubt about Jesus' divinity and power. As if being resurrected by God wasn't enough. Jesus now also ascends directly into heaven. There's no room for doubt by the disciples, by bystanders and witnesses, or by us. But the ascension of Jesus also sets the stage for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost what we consider the birth of the church. And that's church.
with a capital C, meaning the entirety of all Christian believers in every time and place, not just one congregation. Think about it. As Jesus ascended, he actually gave the Great Commission to his followers, telling them to go and make disciples of all nations, Matthew 28, 19. He says, go, minister to all people, no matter where they are or who they are. And those instructions, they weren't just an opinion or a polite suggestion. It was instead a calling. And living into God's calling can be hard. That's why God would send a helper, a comforter, a counselor, an advocate, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the invisible, energizing force that God puts into action in order to move us to action. And since the man Jesus isn't on earth anymore, right there, eating dinner in the room with us anymore, the Holy Spirit is necessary to unite us with Christ through the body of Christ, the church. All of this is to say Christ's ascension sets up the incredible miracle of Pentecost. The arrival of God as an inspirational, energizing, prophetic, tradition-changing force. Jesus is a this Sunday sets up Pentecost, the birth of the church, next Sunday. I mean, yes, in some ways the ascension feels like an end to the Jesus story. Born, baptized, transfigured, resurrected, and now ascended. But Christ's ministry did not end with his ascension. He commissioned us to do what he did, to tell the story, show kindness and compassion, help others, forgive generously. The story about the man of Christ becomes the story of the body of Christ, the body which we all call the church. The ascension gives us confirmation that Jesus is our divine Savior, the Son of God. The ascension is a reminder of the hope we all have in Christ. As he ascended, he prepared a place for us and guaranteed our eventual eternal life with him. And finally, the ascension story gives us joy. Luke tells us that following the ascension, the disciples returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Luke 24, 52. The disciples' joy was not only because Jesus had triumphed over sin and death, but also because they knew they would never be alone. The Holy Spirit would soon empower and guide them in their mission. And friends, today we have that same joy. So what goes up? What ascends? Yes, birds and airplanes. And I don't know, maybe UFOs? <laughs> but most importantly, our Savior. He has ascended it to be forever with the creator of all things. And soon we will celebrate the arrival of his advocate, the Holy Spirit. Let us, the people of God, say, Amen.
God, we turn our hearts to you in prayer. We are grateful for your most holy gift of love, Jesus. And we are grateful that he has gone to be with you now. We are grateful to be able to worship surrounded in the love of those gathered here today. And it is out of our gratitude that we give back. We ask that today you bless and transform our mission donations, our tithes, and our offerings. Additionally, we continue to pray for ourselves and one another. Today we continue to lift up Donna and her family, Scott, we pray for Bob and for Todd, for Ella, for Dave and Chris, for Tony's mother Connie, and in particular his, mother, uh, his sister Donna, who is once again back in the hospital. We continue to pray for Mike and ask for God's healing for him. We lift up our shut-ins, Dottie Knife, as well as Jenny Reber and Deb Martin. And today we pray, God, for healing of any who are sick, under the weather, dealing with allergies or pain, all who are struggling with more difficult diagnoses. Oh, God, pour out your healing. We pray for healing in body, but also mind and spirit, naming to you on our hearts those who are grieving today, those who are feeling lonely, dealing with mental health concerns, depression, anxiety, those struggling with eating disorders, addictions, or even thoughts of suicide. Gracious God, we pray that you make us whole. Today on this Mother's Day, we lift up the women in our lives who have mothered us. The mothers, the nanas, the aunties, the mentors, the Sunday school teachers. And God, we ask you to pour out your blessings on them. And God, we also recognize that this day bears grief for some, those who may be missing their mothers, and those women who may be missing children. God, we ask your presence. We continue to pray for those who once again this week were struck by severe tornadoes, asking that God bless our first responders and be present with all who lost their homes or even their lives. And gracious God, we continue to cry out for peace. Peace in our streets. Peace in our homes. And peace around the world. We cry out against all forms of bigotry and hatred, terrorism, violence, war, and occupation. And God, we ask that you bless all peacemakers and that you make us into peacemakers. We particularly name areas of conflict around the world, Afghanistan, Sudan, Ukraine, and Russia, Israel, and Gaza. Are there additional prayer requests or choice to lift to God today? Yes, for my uh, brother-in-law Frank, <coughs> and also for the home. Tony asks prayers for his brother-in-law who broke his hip, as well as prayers for the hungry and homeless. Are there others? Seeing none, let's say those words that Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
remember no one evil for evil, but strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, and honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of God's Holy Spirit. Amen.